Okay, it's been a while, but today I'm going to be talking about the Pixar theory. And the crowd goes wild! Yay! And I'm actually going to discuss something that surprisingly no one has ever discussed before. How the Pixar shorts fit into the Pixar theory. Okay, upon reflection, it really isn't that surprising. The video's been written now, the research has been done, and here's something that you need to remember for this video. The Pixar shorts create problems when it comes to the Pixar theory. So this isn't going to be one of those Super Carlin Brothers style how so-and-so fits into the Pixar theory videos, because the shorts don't fit into the Pixar theory, to put it bluntly. You know what they do? They create problems. Hello there, how are you doing? So firstly, the shorts are basically shut down any hope of ever fitting into the Pixar theory in the introduction to the Pixar theory book. The Pixar theory states that every feature-length film made by Pixar Animation Studios is connected. You see that? It says feature-length film, not short film, Feature length film. And this would seem to answer the question and imply that the shorts don't fit into the Pixar theory. Except for the fact that these shorts like to create problems. Because literally half of these shorts take place straight after these feature length films the Pixar theory revolves around and are to do with the characters within the Pixar theory. And I'm sure that John Negroni, as in the author of the theory, probably thinks that the shorts that revolve around the characters from the feature length films exist in the universe of the Pixar theory. He's never spoken about it, so. Maybe he hasn't put too much thought into it. But you know who has put a lot of thought into this? I haven't made a video in two weeks. I can quite proudly say I put way too much thought into this. And since I've presumably put more thought into this than anyone else in the world, I've decided that the shorts are split into two when it comes into the Pixar theory. Those that fit into the Pixar theory and those that don't. You have the so-called original shorts, which are all original stories, and almost all of these are released before the theatrical release of a feature-length Pixar film. The exceptions being the ones that were made before Pixar had any feature-length films. And then you have the feature-related shorts, which are shorts that take place directly after a feature-length film with the same characters following up the stories of the film itself. And almost all of these are released with the DVD release of the feature-length film. You know, except for Party Central for some reason, which was released with The Muppets Most Wanted. I don't know who makes the decision. And despite the fact that some of these original shorts have character cameos, just a small little note to any Pixar animators watching right now, these cameos are called creating problems. When people see that Jerry from Jerry's Game is the same guy that fixes up Woody in Toy Story 2, they're automatically going to think that Jerry is the guy that fixes Woody. And if one short fits into the Pixar theory, that means that all of them will. I'm calling out you, Jampin Cava. You created this problem. By the way, love your work on Ratatouille. Complete masterpiece, that film. Also, more recently, the bully in Lou is the exact same kid as the guy sat at the back of Riley's class in Inside Out. And do you know how many times I've been sent this Easter egg? I guess I can't complain. Easter eggs are basically what make me money when I can find some sort of hidden connection, but guys, as much as it pains me to say this, these are just easter eggs. The original Pixar shorts don't fit into the Pixar theory. They would completely ruin the Pixar theory. There are shorts about sentient lamps and their kids, sentient umbrellas who are romantically affiliated, singing volcanoes who are in love. I think it's safe to say that these things don't occur in the Pixar theory. We definitely know that volcanoes can't talk because, you know, it's basically based upon our world. Lamps and umbrellas coming to life might be possible in the Pixar theory because literally an Etch-a-Sketch can come to life and just walk about out, but that's besides the point. If you want to see a whole video about how the rules don't apply to etch sketch you can click here. However, these original shorts aren't the main problem. Pixar rubs salt into the wound with the feature-related shorts. Since these shorts clearly do take place in the Pixar theory, and Pixar uses this to their advantage to create problems! My case in point comes into play through the Toy Story tunes. If you aren't aware, there are three Toy Story tunes, and they follow up the events of Toy Story 3, where the toys are with Bond. And these tunes are actually some of my favourite animated works ever. They're as good as the Toy Story films themselves. But there's just this one tiny little annoying easter egg. The toilet seat cover in Bonnie's bathroom looks like it's made from solid. Everyone and their grandmother knows about this easter egg somehow. I feel like more people know about this easter egg than have seen the short itself. And obviously none of us want this easter egg to be a part of the Pixar theory because, you know, it means that Sully was killed and skinned only to be used as a toilet seat. Secondly, it also implies that there was some sort of story where Sully enters the human world after Monsters, Inc. that we were never told about. And finally, it implies that Sully was killed and skinned only to be used as a toilet seat. Like, even if this is just an easter egg, it's a little extreme, isn't it? Like, is this easter egg targeted at kids watching this short film? Because I can't imagine how this conversation would go down with a kid and a parent. Mom, that toilet seat looked like Sully. 
Did he die? But the worst bit by far is that the evidence lines up for it being Sully and it's almost impossible to prove that it's not Sully. You see what I mean when I say you're creating problems, Pixar? Because no animal from the real world or the Pixar universe at the time of Bonnie would have fur like this. Meaning it's almost 100% Sully reaching this time period through a time traveling door. Okay, so I hope we've got to a stage of the video where absolutely no one wants any of the Pixar shorts to be anything to do with the Pixar theory. Just, yeah. Go. Because as I said, if the Pixar shorts are part of the Pixar theory, Sully has been killed and skinned in an adventure where he somehow returns to the human world, gets caught by humans, and then killed. And why the sequel wasn't about that, I don't know. Sorry, I forgot. They didn't have a sequel idea. They decided to make a prequel instead. However, unfortunately, as much as you may not want this short to be included in the Pixar theory, Jack-Jack Attack all but proves that these shorts take place in the Pixar universe. And this is one of my favourite shorts because it gives us more information on Jack-Jack's power set than all of the Incredibles material put together until now. Incredibles 2 coming in like 8 months, but Jack-Jack Attack reveals him to be some sort of like super god who can teleport, levitate, Stick to the ceiling, morph through walls, shape shift into some sort of fire monster. Oh, and he has laser eyes too. And finally, shown through the last scene of this short, we know that it takes place during The Incredibles. Meaning that if that was ever up for debate, it 100% exists in the same universe. Which means that the evidence provided so far proves that the feature related shorts are canon to the Pixar theory, which means that Sully got killed. But don't worry, you forgot something. These shorts like to create problems. Which basically shows that I put more thought into this than any executive at Pixar ever has, and it's all because of Up. Up is the only one of Pixar's feature films that has had two shorts made out of it. And they've somehow made it that these two shorts are the most problematic shorts out of Pixar's history of problematic shorts. Somehow, both of these shorts create inconsistencies with Up itself. Both of them! Okay, so I brought you two in today to discuss the shorts you've made for Up for its DVD release. You, on the one hand, you know, there's a slight inconsistency with the actual film in your short. And there's also an inconsistency with yours, with the actual film. So you know what? Let's just release both of them! So the first up short is Doug's Special Mission, where there's a slight inconsistency because Alpha's voice is already comically high-pitched when they're introduced to him while they're in the pack. I would be most displeased to hear we lost the bird because of you. However, in the movie, Beta and Gamma express surprise at his faulty voice, implying it had been normal until then. Hey, Alpha, I think there's something wrong with your collar. You must have... Bumped it. Yeah! Your voice sounds funny! And then we have George and AJ, which creates two inconsistencies to the actual film. Firstly, Russell is seen bracing himself underneath the floorboards of Carl's house in the short, but he's not seen there in the film. And also, if it was like it was in the short, it would mean he wasn't stuck, so he could have just let go and he'd have been fine. Secondly, the Shady Oaks retirement village building blasts off into the sky in this film. Yet, during the end credits of Up, Carl is seen socialising with the residents of this home, meaning it definitely they didn't blast off, so... The up shorts just literally ruin everything, okay? They put me on edge, you know that? But they are a good thing, because the fact that they can be considered not canon to the up franchise means that we don't actually have to consider the Toy Story tunes canon to the Toy Story franchise. I don't even know if this is making sense. The Pixar shorts might fit into the Pixar theory, they might not. I'm not gonna be able to give you the answer. All I'm able to tell you is that the Pixar shorts create problems when it comes to the Pixar theory. This video didn't go in the direction I was expecting at all, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway, and if you did, make sure to leave a like, smash that like button, let's get this video to like 5,000 likes. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter, I am so nearly at 10,000 followers, and I think we can get there in the next week, so let's do that. If you enjoyed this video and want to be subscribed for future Pixar content, you can subscribe by clicking here, you can watch another Pixar video by clicking here, and yeah, that's all I've got to say today, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.